Good evening. We'd like to welcome you to the orientation session. This is the 36th annual Color Lab convention. It's April 5th, I believe, today. April 5th. Actually, April 5th, it is John and Freddie's 57th anniversary today. And we would like to thank you for coming to celebrate that and celebrate this uh, occasion with us. We have a whole convention just for you guys. I think that's great. <laughs> this is the orientation session, and although this is primarily for first-time attendees, we always welcome the um, attendees that have been here before and our members that have been here before because it's a good review, and we welcome your input and your questions as we go along. Now, one of the interesting things about this particular session is that it's been um, – shift or compressed from an hour to a half an hour. So we're going to talk really fast, and uh, if you, something goes by or you need to, to ask a question, come to these microphones up here in the front so that we can uh, hear your question so it can appear on the tape or the CD or the MP3, I should say. Now, we tapes are no longer. We don't... Yeah, it's, it's like the, the buggies and the... Okay, so no longer will we... Well, and, and by the way, this is just to announce, if you have not gotten that sheet along with your packet, that blue sheet that lists all the sessions that will be um, recorded at this convention, please pick one up and start checking off the sessions because I'm sure there will be sessions that you may not be able to attend that you'll want to get the, uh, recorded, uh, or the recording for, okay? I'd like to start out, though, this particular session by introducing a gentleman that really needs no introduction here in Colorado. He was the executive director for more than 15 years in, in our formative um, stages or formative years. Um, he's been on the board for 12 years. He's um, been calling for 50-plus years. And beside it being his anniversary, uh, he's been to 36 of these conventions. So John Th Colm Thaller from Pocono Pines, Pennsylvania. Thanks, Mike. My job is to talk fast. Your job is to listen fast. If you get through listening before I get through talking, please raise your hand. <laughs> One of the things that I think is important to realize is part of the history and heritage that we have in this activity. Color Lab started as the idea of Bob Osgood and his fellow members of the Sport Dance Sets and Order Hall of Fame. They had their first meeting in 1970. They had another meeting in 71 and in 72, and they decided they were going to have a convention. And the people who did the planning of that first convention are names that you may or may not remember or may or may not know. I will mention those that I think are here today. Marshall Flippo, and he is here. Ed Gilmore, Lee Helsel, Bruce Johnson, Arnie Cronenberger, Frank Lane, Joe Lewis, Bob Osgood, Bob Page, Dave Taylor, and Bob Van Antwerp. Early board members that began serving with the Sets and Order Hall of Fame people include some other well-known names in the activity, Don Armstrong, Stan Burdick, Alan Brundage, CEO Guest, Cal Golden, who is here tonight, Jerry Haig, Jerry Helt, Jack Lasry, Earl Johnston, Johnny LeClaire, Melton Luttrell, who is here, Jim Mayo, who was the first chairman and is here, Angus McMoran, who was our first Canadian member of the board, Vaughn Parrish, and Bill Peters. Now, some of you may not know who Vaughn Parrish was or who his wife was, but she was a lovely grandmotherly person. And at the first convention in 1974, the discussion was whether we should dance hands up or hands down in an ocean wave. And Jean got up and said, I don't care where a man puts his hands as long as he's gentle. <laughs> I told Mike I was going to say that. I also would like to tell you just a little bit about how Caller Lab is organized with a makeup of the Board of Governors consisting of 25 members. They have an executive committee, which is six members of the Board of Governors, plus an executive director who is a non-voting member of the executive committee. We established the categories of membership of apprentice, licensees, licensees with insurance, active members, gold card members who are life members, and retired members. The administration consists of a home office 
with a paid executive director, a paid staff. They use modern office technology, including emails and all sorts of stuff with a computer, and they have an annual review of the accounts. The foundation, which is the Color Lab Foundation for the Preservation and Promotion of Square Dancing, is very similarly organized because it has the same board of governors, the same executive committee, the same chairman, the same executive director, separate bylaws, and separate accounting. The funds for the foundation are used solely to preserve and promote square dancing. They've done this through the use of videotapes, brochures, grants, and they have grants for affiliate organizations to the tune of $150 a day if you have a square dance caller coming in to do a clinic for your organization and you are an affiliate organization. They have trusts and they have scholarships for color schools and they have color schools conducted by Color Lab accredited color coaches. The other things that they've done, and you, you think about some of these things, they've made the lists, they've made a caller training, uh, a, a curriculum for the training of callers, a new callers handbook. There are a lot of things that they have for have items for sale which are beneficial regardless of the length of time that you've been calling. And Mike said at the beginning that I've been calling in excess of 50 years, and I will admit I've flunked retirement a couple of times. What do I mean by flunking retirement? Even though I'm no longer actively calling on club dates where there's some distance away from my home, I've recently completed two six-week caller training schedules for our local callers association in New Jersey. And I think that's important for all of us if we have an opportunity to mentor somebody to tell them about calling and let them learn early on that you have to learn how to say no. That's probably the hardest thing of square dance calling is learning when and how to say no. One of the other things that we did in Color Lab, some of you may or may not remember if you've been dancing for quite a while, BMI and ASCAP, Broadcast Music Association, Association of Computers and, and what the heck is the other thing that ASCAP? Anyhow, I forget what the acronym stands for, but they were the ones who had the licenses for all of the music. And they sent a letter to some square dance clubs saying, you're going to have to pay us $22 per night per event for the rest of your life. And we said, there's got to be a better way. Clubs can't afford, if they're teaching a class a week and a club a week, club night a week, or whatever they're doing, or party nights or demos, to pay $22 per night, per event, for the whole year. How many clubs do you know that have an extra six, $700? They just don't have it. So we, in Caller Lab, negotiated with BMI and ASCAP to license the performers. And that's what you get when you join Caller Lab and you pay your licensing fees to perform any of the recorded music as a performer. And this covers you, covers anybody who's calling with you that night, or if somebody's just doing a, a amateur night, they're covered as long as you're there with your license. And that was a tremendous thing. We made the lists, the dance programs. We don't call them levels, we call them dance programs. Was that a good thing? You can be the judge of that, but it's fairly widely accepted throughout the world. Years ago, when we were over in Europe, we had 75 clubs. They didn't have square dancing in Czechoslovakia. They didn't have square dancing in Russia. They do now. It's throughout the world. And it's important to realize that this was made possible through the efforts of people like early members of the board of directors who said, hey, guys, we've got to give and we've got to take. And the first convention was in 1974 in St. Louis at the Marriott Hotel. And the interesting thing was that the the discussions would take place at 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock in the morning, a guy like Jerry Haig and Frank Lane sitting there holding hands, says, do you want it this way or do you want it this way, whatever it happens to be. And people would look around and say, what the heck kind of convention is this? One other tidbit I've got to tell you. We were down in Miami Beach, Florida, and we were there, and the people really were totally petrified because one of our subjects was programming for survival. And they saw our name, Caller Lab, and they said, what kind of group is this that's going to program for survival? They thought we were some kind of nuclear outfit. 
It is interesting what people think if you don't tell them. Um, the Color Lab has been something which you will meet people for the first time tonight. You will meet people that you've known the name, but you didn't know who they were. You will make friends, and you will keep these friends, and you will see them throughout your crawling careers in square dancing here in the U.S. and wherever you happen to be. Square dancing is literally all over the world, and they've, they've had conventions in uh, many lab conventions in Australia, in England. We've had one up in Canada. We had a couple in New England, and these things are terrific. And one of the things that happens no matter where you are, you see it in your color lab direction, no badge, no meal, no exceptions. And last year, I must confess that right after Jerry Reed said that, he said, unless your name is John Colton Thaler, because I had lost my badge. You will hear that little mantra several times during our convention. John came up with this, and I don't know, for some reason, it, it just sticks. When you leave here, you will be saying to yourself, no badge, no, badge, no food, no meals, no exceptions. There's, there's an, as John had pointed out, there's a great deal of camaraderie that, that occurs at a caller lab convention. And this is where really we become friends and peers of each other. We get a good chance to pick each other's brains. We get a good chance to have some lively discussions. And as John said, a lot of the discussions occur outside of the sessions themselves or, or maybe at a meal someplace across. So make sure when you sit down to a meal, introduce yourself with all the people. We normally sit in a round circle, get a chance to, uh, to talk with people that are across the way, introduce yourself. Um, we wear these badges for a reason. It gives you a good idea of where people are from, and, and you get a good chance to, to talk about square dancing and about calling and about the activity with people that are from completely different places than you may live, but at the same time, we share a lot of the same um, common issues. So there is a group in our organization that started many, many years ago. Um, I think Erna Egender was one of the real leaders of the partner sessions, and uh, there's been several partners since that time that have taken the reins of, of that particular group, and there's an awful lot of, how can I say, independent issues that occur with partners that this group ad addresses, and I'd like to turn the orientation session over to Janet Oliveri. Janet is a um, partner of Mike out of uh, Colorado. Um, she actually married uh, her high school sweetheart, which is a, a good thing. And they've been score dancing for about 17 years. Mike's been calling for about uh, about 12 years. And um, Janet has been uh, the vice chair of this organization, of the partners session or the partners committee since 2004. And uh, I think there may be some wind that uh, she may be taking over. Hopefully she'll be taking over. Anyway, how about a nice hand for Janet? Janet? Well, I'd like to welcome everybody to Caller Lab, and especially our first-time attendees and their partners. Um, if you look around, you'll see the first-time attendees have a brown ribbon, and so you're not alone. And I remember what it was like to be new. <laughs> it was so scary. But we're trying to make that easier for you now. Um, you know a little bit about me. I'd like to tell you about the Partners Committee. Um, a partner is defined as a person who shares or a companion, and a friend is someone who knows and likes others, a supporter, a helper, and an advocate. As the first chairman of the Partners Committee, Erna Egender felt that she and other partners had something to offer um, to each other and to Caller Lab. It was her hope to establish a committee that would share ideas, foster friendships, and provide helpful information to other partners. They developed a partner's handbook, which since then has become obsolete because of the changing role of the partner. Um, they, let me think back here. Um, we've come a long way since those early days. They would discuss dress code, etiquette, crafts, recipes. Today, we have men partners as well as female partners. Uh, we talk about the uh, topics such as balancing your life 
between work, your family, your church, your community involvement, and your square dancing and calling. Um, we discuss our roles as partners, whether it's active or passive. Currently, the Partners Committee is working on a uh, project that we want to present to Caller Lab so that it'll make first-time attendees feel more comfortable, make your first convention more go more smoothly. Um, our com I would really appreciate having you come and give your opinion, especially if you're a first-time attendee. Our sessions will be a committee uh, meeting on Monday at 1045, and we'll have an informal session on Tuesday at 1045. And if informal is just that. It's a place where you can come, give your opinions, give your ideas, vent if you're frustrated, um, ask for advice. Um, it's just a real laid-back session. There's no recorders, and you're free to come and just say what you wish. Um, the partners committees and the informal are open to everybody at the convention, whether you're a caller, a partner, or a guest. And currently, our vice chairperson, I'm hoping to take over as chairperson. If I don't, our chairperson uh, position will be vacant. We're looking for somebody to take over. If I do take it, we still want somebody to take over as vice chair. So please come and, and maybe volunteer for that. <laughs> um, a few years back, our partners, committee chairman Bev Sutter, made a proposal and received permission from the Board of Governors to allow partners to be active participating members of other committees on Caller Lab. Prior to this, the partners were not allowed to be on a committee other than the partners committee. Um, so please take advantage of this opportunity and make sure that you join a committee, at least one. Um, give them your uh, the advantage of your talent, your skills, your education, your life work experience. It's very important that we all give our opinions to make Caller Lab better. Um, in the packet that you received, there's a green schedule, a little mini one, and there is a directions. The directions has expanded descriptions of what each one of the sessions is about, whether it's an interest session or a committee, uh, committee session. What I would urge you to do as individuals go through and mark the ones that you're interested in. And then, after you've done that, meet with your partner and together decide which ones you will attend. If you split up and your, the caller goes one session, the partner goes to another session, you'll be able to double the information that you can gather and take back home with you. Since Caller Lab only meets once a year, it's really important that we take advantage of the opportunities that we have while we're here. If you want to join a committee, make sure you fill out your committee form and check your box. That's how you become an official member of the committee. And at the end of the com convention, make sure you fill out your critique sheet because the critique sheets are, every one of them is read. They're very important. It's what color, how Color Lab plans their future. Whatever you decide to do, I challenge you to be more involved. Join committees, attend interest sessions, and make your thoughts and ideas known. This is your opportunity to become involved on a personal level and to work uh, with the organization. The committees do almost all the work done by Caller Lab, and they're always looking for willing people to give their ideas and input to committee decisions. The direction that Caller Lab takes depends on the participants of its members and its partners. Um, let's see. Um, I think that was it. I talked about the critique sheet, joining a committee. Any questions for me? Thank you. <laughs> you know, Janet pointed out a, a, a great characteristic of this organization, and it has always been responsive. If, if someone has a comment about an issue and feels passionate enough about it, the board addresses it, um, committees address it. Uh, it's it's a it's an organization where if you if something's burning inside you and and something's bugging you or you just want to find out some information this is the place you can do it. Caller Lab is you and it's it's made up to to seek solutions. Sometimes they're not simple. 
Um, very often, one of the, the most disappointing things about it is you'll be passionate about a particular thing, whether it's a, a program change or whatever it be, and it, it doesn't happen to happen because the, the, the votes didn't swing your way. But this is a very democratic organization, and some of us strongly believe that we are going to follow the rules of the majority. And, and I think it, it's, it's what makes this organization a great organization, but at the same time, it's a, it's a two-edged sword. A lot of times we can't muster enough votes to, to do certain things. Um, at one time, several years ago, there was a charge that, look, why don't we decrease the um, entry program of, of Modern Square Dance. Why don't we decrease the number of calls so we can get people, you know, into the activity in a less of a teaching period of time, you know, like it used to be. And, and, but as most of you know, the changes that we made met with a lot of resistance, um, from areas in the United States, from areas overseas. And because of that resistance, it got down to where it was a vote again. And that vote has swung things back to where our programs are pretty much back to where they were. Um, several years ago, the Program Policy Committee, who has a different name now, Program, no, it was the Program Coordinating Committee, it is the Program Policy Committee. The Program Policy Committee said, we want to open the doors to call it our members. If you are in a situation where you as a caller or as a dance leader can develop a program for people to get into square dancing at a more comfortable place or within the confines of that particular schedule of events of, of that particular group, meaning we've got snowbirds, we've got church groups, we've got uh, youth groups that only meet for a limited amount of time, and there's only a limited amount of time that you have to teach, well, go right ahead and put together a program and we're in the process we're probably into four to five years now into that process where we're seeing some easy learn to dance programs come about um, from the ABC programs from the uh, new dancer programs in Japan um, to programs in Great Britain we're we're seeing some other ways to look at getting dancers to enjoy our activity uh, how many attended the beginner um, leader partner or the the seminar that occurred this weekend show of hands several of you it's it, it is a great it is a great weekend of learning and there's a, a tremendous amount of information that comes out of that that weekend for um for being able to r run new dancer dances but uh, the comment that i heard from one of the callers just in the, the uh in the last session that we were in, which I think is the cocktail session, uh, social hour, <laughs> we were talking about that kind of material. And and the comment was made, well, that type of material, you know, is okay, but it's, it's uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how to, you know, get this get out from a, a 1P, 2P line. And, 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 and we both looked at each other, the, the young Lady caller and I looked at each other and said, "This is the this is the base. This is where it all starts. Once you put your feet on the ground and know how to bring fun to those brand new dancers that have yet to put their feet on the floor, that's when you have the ability to to expand from there. But without that groundwork, you there's there's little place to go. And I think over the last several years, we've we've shown that some of the tools that you need for one night parties and 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 those brand first night events." are tools that you're going to use whether you're calling a, a weekend festival someplace or whether you're calling it a, a hundred squares at a national convention or any kind of uh, situation like that. One of the things that Janet brought out was she said that we get this packet and if you haven't opened up your packet before you go to bed tonight, go back to your room and open up your packet and look through, as Janet said, this issue of direction which gives you all the information on all the sessions and I advise you to take this little green thing that and fold it up in about three places and stick it in your pocket and carry it with you the entire convention because it not only has a map of the hotel which will probably take you a half a day or so to get this down and once you do you'll you'll have the lay of the land around this place you'll know where all the restrooms are you'll know where all the uh, the interest sessions are and you know where the elevators are and once you got that figured out and, and the uh, exhibitors you'll have it made um, this also can give you something you can check it off you can look at the sessions you're going to and it's a real quick easy guide for you to be able to plan your day and plan your events 
Um, I think it's it's kind of a, a fallacy that you might be able to hit two different sessions during the same time because there's always things going on during those sessions with a new speaker and and whatever. So I would really invite you to go to one particular session that you find is interest to yourself. And if there's another one that's occurring at the same time, pick up the uh, recording of it from uh, convention tapes because it's just impossible to make all of those sessions. And we do this intentionally because we only have a few days to pack in a lot of information, and there's a tremendous wealth of information that occurs in all those sessions, as well as the committee meetings themselves. There's also one very, very, very important thing that you're going to need to hang on to and bring to the Wednesday morning session, and that's this little vote card. Now, you need this to vote on any of the issues, and, and I'm not sure what's up above our, uh, our session, but I'm sure before the weekend's out we'll know. Yeah, we'll know because normally in, in the Call to Lab convention, the call to convention is sent out in the first direction of the year, and that generally has any motions or any changes that will be addressed at this convention. Um, those are are binding unless turned over by two thirds of the voting membership. And so if we have any of those issues come up at this particular convention, um, we'll need this. And although it will be just a straw vote because it will actually go to our members for a, a final vote because it wasn't actually listed in the call to convention. So save this. You also have your uh, little itinerary for your banquet in there. It doesn't have the menu on there, but it has some great information on the, uh, on the banquets and what occurs. And as Janet said, this critique sheet is – a sheet that Caller Lab plans every convention with these critique sheets and your suggestions. There's names here for, or there's space here for um, suggestions on, on sessions that we might have in the future. There's also suggestions for, um, for speakers and for people to be part of these interest sessions. If you'd like to be part of a particular interest session and have a topic, write it on here because the executive committee would like to know. And believe me, they read Every single one of these. And we divide them all up, and everybody on the executive committee reads every single one of these. So um, please fill those out uh, and put them in the box at the opening session. Um, if for some reason you uh, you can't make the, open, or the the closing session because of the your time constraints or whatever, fill it out anyway and make sure somebody gets it so that you can turn that in, Okay. Uh, also, I, I pointed out earlier that there's a digital auto, audio recording listing of all the recorded sessions. Uh, it's not part of your packet, but it's sitting up there on the registration desk. And I invite you to pick this up and look through these sessions to, uh, to determine what you might want to pick up so that uh, you can kind of complete your, your education or your experience here by picking up more ideas from other sessions that you might be able to not personally attend. John, you want to add... Uh did you introduce yourself, Mike? No. Mike Seastrom, former member of the Board of Governors for a number of years. How many years, Mike? 22. This is your 22nd convention, 23rd? You're 22 years on the board? 22 years on the board. He also was a previous chairman of the board, so let's give Mike a big hand for moderating this session. The session is concluded at this point, but this is going to be the room that we're going to dance in, I believe. So we would like to invite you to move, help us move the chairs uh, out to the sides so that we can set up for the coming session. Um, before we before we go, though, anybody have any questions? Anybody? Comments? Concerns? Issues? Come to the microphone and we'll and then we'll sneak these out and then we'll get a chance to, to dance. Bob? Where's I'm not used to talking in a microphone. Where's Cal Golden? Is Cal here with us? Listen, if you don't get a chance, or please get a chance to stop and talk to Cal. Cal is one of the, the greats of our activity. And also, we have representatives from other organizations that are here. And Where it, are the other ones that you mentioned that were here that were some of the founding, I want to Flip, say founding fathers? <laughs> yeah. Marshall Flippo's here somewhere. Flippo is here. Luttrell's here. Uh, if you get a chance to stop and talk to these people, talk to them, shake their hands, and uh, and especially the representatives of our organizations as well. Okay? Right. 
It's going to be in here. Yeah, it was listed as being in, in another area, but it's going to be in this in this place. Okay, so help us move the chairs. So we'll put it all together. Thank you for attending.